Trusting with Kerry Jones. Hi. Hello, Niall. How are you keeping? Good, and yourself? Oh, not too bad. Thanks for joining me. Have you been out lately? Um, I suppose my most recent trip there was the Airflow um, Heat Day up in Loch Lean. That was my most recent trip, nearly two weeks ago now. Um, so it was a good, uh, it was nice nice to, to get first place with the lads, like you so, um, and I suppose getting qualifying for Rutland. Well, a big congratulations <laughs> for that. So, what, uh, what was the tactics? Uh, so, it was mainly all dry flies. Um, we did a couple of practice days beforehand, tried off, tried tried a number of different methods, um, pulling methods and, you know, different sink tip lines and stuff, but conditions were kind of a bit rough. What was it? Beforehand. It was kind of windy a couple of days leading up to the... the um, the match day so I suppose different techniques were working up until then but because it kind of went it was promised to go dry or a real flat cam we said we'd we'd um, we'd go on the dries and dries were the main method of the day and it's a really good lake yeah I only fished it a couple of times myself um, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't hard to figure out you know because it's not a really big lake just trying to find the fish and what they were feeding on and we we're kind of chasing after like snail feeders and stuff like that, um, but it was just dries really mainly. Um, but it was real tricky, like you know, it was it was it was a stage there where they were just very hard get, and I, I suppose the the important thing was to to downsize and to go to a really light line frog hair, four pound line, um, was absolutely crucial. And if I had lighter in the box, I probably would have put it on at one stage. Yeah, is that because just, of lots yeah. of people have had practice the days leading up to it, and they just yeah, there was there was a lot of boats on it um, leading up to it, and um, because they're so comfortable feeding, I think just having that little bit of a lighter presentation, um, and you were kind of targeting feeding fish, you know, uh, trying to get in front of them and and uh, hopefully that he take it, but uh, no, it worked out well, and all the lads got fish, and I did well myself, so I was pretty happy with my results and. We end up getting first place, so it was, yeah, it was, so it was great. No, have you fished a competition before? No, no, we never fished it. That was our first year to fish it now, um, as a, as a group, which I know probably beginners look, but yeah, it was it was great to to get it over the line. Like we've some some of the best anglers in the group there in yeah. the country, like you know, um, so we have a really good gang of lads. We all get on really well. We all learn from each other. Um, it's nice. So it's great, yeah. It's nice when a plan comes together. And I think when rainbows are up on the top, there's always a good chance of doing well, you know. And especially if they're in the surface and they're moving around, feeding. It's all he wants a bit of yeah. breeze put in front of him. And yeah, well, I, I, well, on this particular day, the trout seemed to kind of like, especially snail feeders, like they'd come on, they'd come off they come on and they come off but there was a particular part of the lake where they just kept coming on then they go off and then they come on and I think it was kind of crucial to stick to that and just wait it out until they came on and wait for your chance um, because when they come up you did get a chance every time of covering a fish or getting in front of a fish and that was your probably your only opportunity of um, of picking up a couple of fish and I suppose in the back of your mind then you're thinking how other lads are getting on and they're probably up the lake, probably bagging up and getting yeah. getting them on. But I suppose stuck to the tactic of like, you know, I was looking around and didn't see many boats bent in fish. So I said, Jesus, well, look at them picking up a couple of fish. So maybe this is probably the best, best to stick it out and just kind of keep at these because they are coming on and off. And you could see that they come up for a few minutes, you get your chance, you get your fish, then they go off for half an hour and then, you know, and then you get another chance, and 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 you just kept grinding away at it, and you know it's nice actually, isn't it? Especially this time of year now, probably July, August, especially when the the wild browns they go, it can be quite hard, kind of. It's nice to be able to yeah. have 
some sports with rainbows. You can almost rely on rainbows most of the year. It's kind of a new bit of fishing for myself because, you know, I don't do a lot of rainbow fishing and I kind of wanted to broaden my scope on, on more fly fishing when, when the browns are kind of kind of gone off yeah. and the best of it's kind of over. Um, and I just wanted to, I suppose, have something else to fall back on just to keep, just keep fly fishing, I suppose. Um, you know, um, like the season comes in so quick and it's gone and then I you're know. like, she is, it, it just goes so fast and you're like, I, I wish I made more of a time because I have to wait now another year for it to happen again. Yeah, it's almost like the season's halfway over almost already, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. And the, like the, the cream of the crop is over, like, you know, the best of it. Yeah. With the buzzer fishing and the, the mayfly and the olives and the duck fly and yeah. cam toe, it's all, it's all behind you. Before we go on to um, the the hatches uh, for early season, have you actually fished Rutland before? Because you go in there for the final October, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yeah, no, I've never been to England fishing so i absolutely cannot wait um i really can't um i'm looking forward to getting over and fishing new water and figuring out new things and you know and working with some of the best anglers and the best of friends trying to figure out yeah what's the best way to approach it and you know i couldn't ask for a better a better gang whether we do well or not i i'm looking forward to the trip itself you know yeah uh with the, with the bunch um so well, you know, there's only going to be learnings from us, really. Yeah, I've I've been fishing Rutland for decades, really. But when when I found out the final is October, there's a chance you know you're going to get good fishing because the last I would say the last three or four years, come June, it's just switches off. The fishing is really hard, um, right? And I don't think they even stock it in the summer then because you know the temperature rises, they got the air it is on. But the end of September now, and hopefully it'll cool down and you'll have some nice fish. You might get some nice browns that time of year from there as well, actually. Yeah, well, like, I, I won't lie, I'm starting to do an awful lot of research in plenty of time, you know, watching videos and reading stories and books and whatever, I can, whatever information I can get my, my hands on, really, just to understand what the lake is like that time of the year. And, um, you know... Uh, flies that work well and stuff like that and just getting prepared for it now and not leaving it last minute I suppose Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's probably part of why we did so well the last time is because we were to be fair very well prepared for it um, and uh, you know stuck to a game plan and I suppose hopefully we'll be able to do something similar in Rutland. Yeah I've got a three day uh, up there in September the end of September I'll have to let you know what we do well, that's. I think that's where we're going. We're going to be going. We're going to be over there for a, a good few days beforehand, leading up to the competition. I think it's that weekend we'll be going over. So we'll be on it for three or four days ourselves. You were saying that um, the cream of the fishing, more or less, as has been. How was it for the start of the season for you in the spring? Um, it was quite good. Um, my duck fly was a lot better than it was last year. Um, I had it was pretty tough for me last year uh, in the duck fly, but this year it was good. I was picking up a good few fish. Now the best day we had to the boat was twelve. Um, not wow. a massive number, but still it was still a great number to get for duck fly. Um, now we've had better before, but but um, and especially going off the back of it last year where it was very bad for me, uh, it was great to pick up a couple of fish, I suppose, um, and that time of the year you're so excited coming into the duck fly you know you you're, you've been dreaming of buzzer fishing for nearly six months if not longer and um you just want everything right and you just want to be on the lake as much as possible but but um but yeah no it was it was it was okay like you know it wasn't it was patchy at times and then it kind of picked up um our best day this year was pretty much we had a storm on the carob couldn't go out fishing and it was the day after the storm we were like we need to get on that now because that's going to store everything up and it's going to bring on the hatch and surely enough we were right and that day we went out it was crazy now we should have had a lot more fish you know there was a mm. lot of fish lost and takes and oh it was it was mad and and even like we, we still managed to 
boat, 12 fish, but we could have nearly doubled that in, in the amount of takes we got because it was just, it was crazy. All the bays were just going at the same time. We were nipping in and out, resting a spot, coming back to us, picking up a fish, um, going to another spot, you know, so we were kind of just zigzagging around the place. What was that, April um, time, is it? That, yeah, I can't put an actual date. I think it was on the end of March. It was, oh, it was really? I think it was, yeah, I think it was the last week in March. Um, it would have been before the Uktarad 50, um, which I think was on Easter weekend. Uh, the fish oh, was really good. And then it, it, as soon as it came in, it was gone, uh, the duck fly this year. Um, it didn't really stick around in and out real fast. Sometimes it does drag out an extra week or two, and you might pick up a bay that goes later than others, and you might get good fishing on it. But it was, it was, it wasn't, uh, it was good, but it just wasn't, wasn't um, as good as other years, you know. That's the the bottom end of the lake you're fishing then? Predominantly, no. It was more middle of the lake uh, for the duck fly and kind of more up towards the likes of Greenfields and stuff like that. Birch Hall, Saddle, um, Marker 50, and Bits of Nana Down. Um, down the lake kind of fished really poor this year for us, you know. I can draw a line, you know, the, the pier. Uh, Knock Ferry. My cal- Knock Ferry, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. as soon as I, I'd i fish up to that area there, and then I'd never go past it. It's almost right. like a totally different lake, isn't it? Different lake, yeah. Like, like Corrib is so big, and it takes such a long time to learn the bays and stuff like that. Now, obviously, because I live close to Corrib, I, I have the pleasure of trying to figure out these bays and, and fish in them all and see what they can produce. And yeah. the good thing is, they all can produce, you know. They all have their times and their, and the good thing is you can nip in and out to all of them, um, and you end up going up and down the lake, uh, an awful lot, um, especially with duck fly, well, and camto as well, yeah, for the buzzer yeah. fishing. You end up going up and down, like down the lake can be good, up the lake can be good, and it's sometimes it's hard to fish everywhere, and but when it's on, it's on, like you know. Well, what I've learned is from a uh, knock ferry down. The mayfly almost, apart from a few different places, is almost non-existent. It's crazy, yeah. It's mad because it's so like you might get a small bit of mayfly in Marker Fifty, but it, it's not much. Um, yeah, your last bit of mayfly is kind of like around um, Anakin and Birch Hall and them places. And yeah. you stay coming as soon as you come to Knock Ferry, then it's like. It's rare to see a mayfly, you know. You might see a few, or all right, but nothing, nothing crazy, like you know. I find when you get past a knock ferry and you're going down, you get these big markers. Then, don't you? And it's almost like a film set or some prehistoric, futuristic yeah. film or something, you know. And yeah. you just gonna keep to the markers, going like a slalom going down. Yeah. And well, here's a funny. Well, here's a funny one for you now. I find uh, I've done really bad on wet fly fishing anywhere below. Um, the markers in in um, Knock Ferry. So if, if you're going down the lake, as you said, there past Knock Ferry, yeah, I don't think I I I I did never had a good day on wet fly fishing. I had one day there on the wets. I I met two or three, and uh, none of them stuck. But I did go one day on the buzzers as well with a guy David Donnelly, and we we had a few fish by saddles, so that was good. But the thing is, I keep my boat up by Basil's in Uttarad. And to be honest, like I got a 9.9. To go all the way down there, that's an hour. Where if you were a 15 <laughs> or 20, you could probably go down there in about 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. And if you've got a wind going one way, you're going to catch it one way or the other, go in there or coming back. So, yeah. you know, I normally stick to the, the Uttarad up, you can see. But um, yeah. I might be invested in a, another engine this year, I think. Have yeah, you, I think uh, I think you, especially when when the fishing is on, it's it's a, a bigger engine is probably important and stuff like that. Have you got your own boat, an engine? Uh, it's in the works at the moment. It's in the works. You know, I have a lot going on. I'm just after buying a house and stuff like that. So all right. But um, but yeah, no, the lads, when they all have boats, and it's easy. They're very accommodating. You could say. What was the tactics you had success on your buzzers? Well. Duck fly this year, mainly like, you know, normal tactics. You, you, when you're fishing your duck fly, it, it's seven or eight feet to your first fly. Um, and then four, four and four. Yeah. Um, 
when the cam toe comes in, then it's kind of like you're going to be changing a lot of tactics in, in your buzzer. Like you're going to be going in into shallow water, into deep water, depending on what the day is going to be like. If it's going to be a windy day, you know, you might ship, fish the shallow water. I'd still keep a, a, a long leader, but kind of move them that little bit faster. Uh, if it's a flat, flat cam day, deeper water, you know, let the buzzer yeah. right down. Yeah. And then uh, if you see fish feeding higher in the water, you know, you'd change your cast, you'd shorten it. Yeah. Um, it's mostly epoxies you'd be fishing, is it? Mainly epoxies, yeah. Nearly all epoxies. Um, like, what works re- well for myself is, you know, I, I usually have breeders, quill buzzers. But, like, I always think about this, you know, everyone's thinking about the buzzer, but every man out there is catching fish. And they all have different buzzers on. Yeah. So I think the most important thing is that the buzzers is not there to catch the fish. It's to give the, the angler confidence. Yeah. And when the angler has confidence, he'll catch fish all day long. You well, know, you, if, you, if, you, if you feel like you have four buzzers on that's, that's going to catch fish, you'll catch fish because you'll be so confident in fishing them. And it's the way you fish them, you know. You'll fish them real static and you'll, and, you know, you, you'll feel like you, you, you have it. Yeah. But if, you, if you're using buzzers that... You think, oh, Jesus, these are, I don't know, like, catch, you won't fish them right. You'll move them too fast no. or you'll move yeah, them yeah. too slower, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but standard quail buzzers, you know, for camto, yellow cheeks um, works really well. Quail or, or yellow cheeks, orange cheeks, uh, red holographic cheek for me on the tail works really well. Um, but I do like the yellow because it's bright and, you know, uh, it stands nice. out very clear, especially in a nice camish, you know, ripply water kind of a day. How did you do in the Mayfly? Um, well, compared to other years, I hadn't the best of Mayfly this year. No, um, I'm like just I, I had my, Yeah, last year was absolutely brilliant. I broke more records last year and got amazing bags last year. But this year, I only fished the Mayfly for... Uh, because I'm, I'm fishing the first two weeks, I'm fishing Buzzer on Carob. And then the second two weeks, then I kind of I kind of come off the Carob, even though there's fantastic... Mayfly fishing to be done there, but I kind of concentrate in Sheelan because I love it up there and, yeah. I, and I love the, the fishing on it. You know yourself, you know, the, the quality of fish that's in it. But it was, I, I fished four days straight on Sheelan this year. I caught fish every day. I had lovely fish up to seven pounds on the spent, uh, a few five pounders on the nymphs. Um, but there was one day in particular, I was fishing with Gene. Um, you know Gene, uh, yeah, Gene, Gene Harlan. Harlan, yeah. So I was fishing with him one day. Uh, it was all excited, lovely conditions, uh, perfect for for nymphing the whole lot, and uh, I was looking forward to a really good day. And my God, he gave me a ferocious hammer in the boat. He he caught nine fish, and I caught one. So after he caught the first three or four fish, I was because I'm very competitive, you know, and so is Gene. And I was kind of <laughs> trying to, and I'm always trying to learn. You see, I'm always trying to, you know, understand what's going wrong, and you know. So, what were you fishing? Like, Dries? Were you fishing? Dries? No, we're fishing, fishing nymphs. Nymphs. All right. Nymphs up in Sheelan. So, I was like, right, that's it now. I said, show me the length of your cast. So, I put a, the length of the cast up to my, my cast. I measured it exactly the same. We had three of the exact same nymphs tied the exact same way in the, sa- in the, same, in the same parts of the cast. So, that ruled that out. We cast at the same distance at the same time, and a retrieve was the exact same time. So we were doing the, I was following him for an, an hour or two and he was still getting the takes. And I was like, oh, jeez, I don't know. I can't figure this one out. So, yeah, that was my last day on Sheila and I, I, I couldn't get back to 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 rectify it. But did you, hopefully next year. Did you use the same leader material? Same leader material, frog hair. That's all, that's all I kind of, we ever use is frog hair. I find it's the best there is, yeah. I, I like. I, I really stand behind it. It's like I've never ever had any issues with it. For mm. Sheila, I'd be using eight pound frog here, though. I wouldn't be using six. Yeah, I got yeah. broke a couple of times actually on Sheila, and uh, I learned my lesson. I was always, I'm a true believer. I love this. It's got Snowby Super Flora Carbon, and it's six point five. And up until I fished Sheila, I would put money on it. I would land any fish. But they were breaking right. me, and I, I went on to Maxima then. And you wouldn't think, you know, there's a big difference in it. I love, I do love Maxima to be honest. 
But it was so. Next time I'll be sticking to Maxima. But I haven't tried frog. I, a long time ago, I used frog hair. I am used it for a while. Yeah. Now I don't use frog hair for dries, like for for spent fish and anything like that. I use straightforward green pow- or six pound green Maxima. I think it sits lovely into the water, yes. mudded. Yeah, and it has serious strength to nearly pull a boat. It's that strong. But for the nymphs, you know, I always on shield and I go to eight pound. And yeah. I, yeah, I, I've never broken a fish, thankfully. Um, you know, I have full confidence in it, and I suppose yeah. that's half the battle. Have you caught my eye back at the start of the season? It went on last year when you were catching these fish uh, on the lower parts of the lake, on the Corrib, on the buzzers, and then the pictures I've seen on social media, it's all on the locks and Sheila and Corrib. Do you actually do yeah. much rivers? I don't, and I suppose it's it's not like I don't want to. It's it's finding the time to do it. You know, I'm so busy with 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 fishing on the lakes from March until the end of May. Hopefully, I get a bit of canis fishing in June, and then I like to fish for the salmon as well. So salmon comes along, and I kind of concentrate on that. And for a few, probably June, July, bit of August. So I find it hard to get onto the rivers, but it's definitely something that I want to learn because, you know, it, it's, it takes kind of delicate tactics, um, which will definitely only improve your fishing. Um, so it's definitely a goal of mine anyways to, to learn a lot of that um, New Zealand style nymphing for trout and stuff. So there's the power stuff to learn there. Yeah, it's a different ball game altogether. That. But I'm not really a river person. I would nine times, out of t- well, 10 times out of 10, given the choice, I would fish the the lock off a drifting yeah. boat. Um, yeah, me too. I'm the same. Yeah. Now, will you, in the summer now, will you be fishing the evenings for the Peter or the Murrah? Maybe the Murrah's coming maybe to an end perhaps now. But. Yeah. yeah. Um, I suppose come August then, I kind of, in the last few years, kind of got into my wet fly fishing, which I'm starting to really enjoy. Um, so I like those big windy days on Corrib or Mask. Yeah. Out pulling wets in the deeps and stuff like that after Daphne feeders and pints of islands and stuff like that. I get a good enjoyment out of that. I enjoy that kind of fishing, you know, and um, it's 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 pure traditional. So you know, it's it's right up my alley. Um, and there's a there's a lot of you know, it's just you go out and you you put on your wet flies and you you throw them across a big wave and you watch the fish coming up and splashing and hitting them and Lovely, yeah. it's good it's enjoyable it's really enjoyable and a lot of competitions as well because I'm kind of newly like started on competitions it's kind of like a, a lot of them are wet wet flies and stuff so it's a, it's a it's a game that you have to really learn and learn well if you want to succeed like so are you going to fish the loch uh, mask world cup I am yeah so this will be I think this will be my f- Third, third year fishing it. I'm only, I'm only fishing competitions in the last uh, three years. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm only new to competitions. I'm kind of only new to fly fishing in general. I only picked up fly fishing really in the last five years. And as soon as I, t- as soon as I started, sure it was there was no going back. Hopefully, I'll see you there then because I haven't actually entered yet. I haven't actually sent. Um, the, I'm the, the same. I have to do with yet. Yeah. So, I've been meaning to fish it for a number of years, and one thing or the other, I I could I could make it, but I'm coming over the last day this month, thirty first of July, and I'll be over there for a month, so I will fish it this year. Um, you saying you you only got into fly fishing the last five six years? Did you yeah. fish before? How did you get into fishing? I did. I like I was always into fishing, but I wasn't into fly fishing. So. And I was a young lad, like, I come from a place right out in the countryside, no rivers, all the way from, I knew nothing about Loch Corrib or any of the wild lakes or fly fishing for trout or anything like that. And I started off pike fishing in a local lake up beside me, now Bog Lake, and they had pike. And when I was a young lad, I used to cycle down and I was mad about fishing. And then I suppose I was fishing for little tiny trout and little streams that would go through a couple of the farms and stuff like that. And... But um, yeah, I was mad into pike fishing there for a long time in my early 20s and as a teenager. And then I kind of grew out of it because I was off, you know, going to college and stuff. So I hadn't fished for a number of years. And then when I moved it back into Galway, you know, I took up the fishing again. And 
it was just by chance that I had a, one of my good friends was actually living with uh, Gene Heron at the time. And this guy knew nothing about fishing whatsoever, but he said to me one day, he goes, Jesus, there's a lad here living with me. He's mad and stole fishing. You must meet him. I said, oh, yeah. I will, yeah. And I never thought anything of it. And I said, Jesus, I will, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll call over there one evening, sure. And lo and behold, it was Heron himself. And uh, we got chatting anyways, and he was telling me stories. And I was like, Jesus, that's crazy. Like, you know, <laughs> about the wild lakes and catching this. And I was always fascinated like you know i used to always like pick up like um the trout and fly or the jar or the magazines and stuff like that and be like wow someday i'll, I'll, I'll get to fi- i'll go out there fishing not thinking that i was ever going to do it um and uh, but uh it was like sure jesus we'll, i'll bring you out there someday in car adventure when we went out when he brought me out then a, a week or two later i was absolutely blown away because it was i think it was in the middle of the duck fly and uh oh sure he was catching fish left right and center and i couldn't i couldn't understand i was absolutely blown away now i didn't catch at him on my first trip with him but i i um, i said the second day i was like wow I, I like i couldn't really cast or anything um and i suppose i ended up fishing a lot then with gene and in order to get good then you got better at casting you had to and i'm very competitive as i said earlier like and and when he he'd be catching fish after fish and I'd be like, "Jeez, I can't get anything." And I I just it drove me to <laughs> learn more. It drove me to learn more. And and you really have to be sharp and quick on that boat if you want to try and catch a fish under him because he will cast longer and faster than you. And you just have to learn fast. And we end up just fishing a lot together and learn so much. Then I I find the carib especially it's the sort of thing you say and you couldn't wait to get back out and do it again. I find you have a tough day and sometimes you think, oh, geez, I want a break from the lake. But the next day, you can't wait to get back out there. And if you catch, you oh, can't yeah. wait to get back out there. So you're on this cycle. You just want to keep getting out there all the time. Every day is different out there, especially, like, I've seen it in the middle of, like, you know, Camp Town. You, you're like, geez, I'm going to go out and have an unbelievable day. And you could come in and you wouldn't catch a fish and you'd be like, what's going on? And then you go out the following day and you could catch 20. There were a couple of red letter days this year in, in the camp tow. Um, we had 21 fish one day, and then we had two days of 14. Um, phenomenal fishing. What's the your, your biggest? Uh, somewhere in the region of 12, I suppose. Did you? On the fly, then? All on the fly, all in carib, yeah. Jeez, that's a good fish for the carib on a fly. There's not many people oh, have tw- had a double. I, I, did you say, uh, sorry, I must have misheard you there now. Oh, yeah, say, that, oh, no, no, the biggest fish. Oh, the biggest fish. Oh, yeah. I actually, my biggest fish in carob is probably about six and a half pounds. That's nice, though. Yeah. It's a, yeah, amazing fish, and I'm, I'm really struggling to get over that six and a half pounds. Um, yeah. um, but yeah, no, my biggest fish would have been um, on Sheelan last year. I had a nine pound fish. Wow. Yeah, I was, I was blown away. So I was, I was... I seen some of the fish that was coming off the lake and I that's why I kind of kept at it and putting in the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, last year was just, I had such a good year last year. I had loads of fives and sixes and sevens and Jesus, I, I blew it away then with a nine and I couldn't believe it. That's a water I'm going to fish a lot more of now. I fished it many years ago. Two occasions I fished it. And then, you know, it's like coming over from Wales, there's only one place I wanted to go. I wanted to fish the Corrib. So when you're there for a couple of weeks, I don't mind then having a day somewhere else. And I fished uh, Sheelin when I was over. I had a great time. And I also fished Loch Arrow. That's a lovely lake. Have you been there? Yeah, I've, I, I've fished it with Luke O'Connell, all right? Um, a good friend of mine, He's he, he he used to fish an awful lot up there. And I went. I only fished it the once, though. Uh, but a, f- a fabulous lake. Really beautiful. Something as well I noticed this year on the Corrib. In the past... But for years, there's a there's an order. You you've got your, your buzzers, and then you have got um, or the duck fly you can see, and the camp door, and then you have got the olives, and then the mayfly. But what I noticed this year, the mayfly didn't really take off. It was the days where you think this is it, it's starting, but it didn't. It was quite diluted. I found the the mayfly, and when the mayfly finished, there was loads of uh, olives still coming off. Strange, yeah. No, you will get um, olives that will kind of like they'll hatch well, and then they'll stop, and then they'll come back on. And 
for me, like it's mainly olive fishing is kind of like April, but to get them in late May, yeah, you know, you'd be doing well to get them in late May. What is your goal known for this year? Well, I said I said I would go this year, I suppose, to um I fished the Connect Cup for the first time ever because I wanted to try and um see could I get on the Irish team. So I qualified in the Connect Cup, I came sixth and I got the largest fish on the day. Good. Uh so I have a chance now to fish the Interpro, which is in August and the Nationals next year. So oh, two chances really to try and try and get myself on the team. So I suppose that's that's my goal at the moment. Um and hopefully it'll 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 work out. And and do well in Rutland, I guess. That's it exactly, yeah. It'd be great to, to it'd be great to do well in Rutland, you know. Do you tie flies at you all? Know? I do, yeah. I, I've I like that now because I'm new to it in the last few years and I stopped uh, I had to stop begging the lads for flies. I had to start making my own. <laughs> Because I was a beggar there for a few years or whatever, like, can I one of those? Can I have that? And I think they were kind of getting fed up with me asking and said, and they were like, you just need to tie your own now at this stage. So I said, you know what? If you're, if you're going to be a good angler, you have to learn how to tie your own flies. Yeah. There's so many good tires out there now, though, isn't there? There is, yeah. There is some fantastic tires, yeah. you know. And the Irish patterns especially, you know, they look, there's nothing... Nothing better than just looking into a fly box and seeing all those olives and burnt colours, you know. I know, yeah. It's lovely. Like. And the, the funny thing is, you know, <laughs> funny thing is you have boxes of flies, but you'll always go back to the same yeah. fly or the same pattern that you'll get your fish on. Yeah. And it's just like you have a collection and you bring it with you. Yeah. Now, last year in the World Cup, funny enough, I, I, brought, I didn't bring my fly box out. I brought two lines in my pocket and a box of flies and I had all the space on the floor because I was going to fish and I was going to fish hard and I didn't want Anthony in my way. And sometimes I'm like that in shielding as well. Just don't bring any, don't bring all the box gear, just bring what you are going to yeah. use for the day and stick to it. And it's mad, like it's just, we bring all this gear with us all the time and we don't need it. But no. some days you do then. <laughs> yeah. You there has been times where I've done that and I'm like, cheers, I never brought the box. What am I like? You mentioned uh, earlier on that uh, you started pike fishing, and I noticed there's one or two pictures on your on your Facebook. There's one or two big pike. Have you ever thought of fishing for the ferox on Oh uh, yeah, I'd like like I'd love to I'd love to give it a go. All right, I, I did do a, a day or two, but it was unsuccessful. I, I see myself. I'm like I can't. I'd rather go out fly fishing, to be honest, and you know, buzzer fish, or I'd rather be fly fishing. And, and so I suppose you can't really do it all, but if there was a day or an opportunity where I could do it, I, I, I'd like to do it, you know. It'd be nice to catch a big fair ox and get that picture, you know. Yeah, it's um, it, it can be quite addictive, you know, once you've got the taste for it and you see a, a picture of something when you see a big fish. But when you actually see a fish in real life, like a 20-pound, even a, even a pike is big fish. It, photographs don't do it justice. And when you, I just like, I got addicted to it, you know. Uh, yeah, but I've I know got, it can be addictive, I'd say. Yeah, but I've gone back to fishing a lot more with the fly now. So I didn't do much trolling actually this year when I was over there. But they almost like disappear in July, August. It's as if there's, there's no big fish in there. They just, I don't know, they just go off the feed. But September time now, towards the end of the year, I'll concentrate more at it again. But and is it good? Is is the ferox good fishing in September? It is. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. May, May is the best. May and June. May and June, yeah. Yeah, and it, that's the funny thing. See, is it, at May time that's when the, the the best fly fishing is, but it's also when the best time you're going to get the the, uh, the big ferox. The big well. ferox. Yeah. yeah. But September's the next time. Really, you'll have a, a good chance. Maybe when I come over, you, I'll, I'll take you out for the day. Absolutely, I'd say yeah, that'd be great. I'd, I'd so, really appreciate that. So you're living in Galway now. You brought up in Galway. I brought up in the countryside in Galway, um, and recently, well, I moved into Galway probably nearly seven or eight years ago, and I bought a house in the city now. So yeah, I'm full time in here now. It's a and recently place. had a baby as well. I saw. Yeah, well done. Busy times ahead, and 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 the fishing, the fishing can't get any more. Anyways, it'll only slow down. I'd say. Well, at least you're close. You don't have to travel far to go fishing. Yeah, I'm lucky in that sense. You know, I am lucky. Um, 
But I also have a great partner who understands, you know, that uh, camp toe is only two or three weeks of the year. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, so that's great. There's um, a few of you at the beginning of the year that you take like two weeks off. You there just... is. Uh, there's a gang that was there. This is the exact team that was on that airflow as well. We we have a WhatsApp group. We have Darren Maguire, Gene Harron, Luke O'Connell, Paul Lunny, and Connor McNamee. I met all these lads through uh, Gene. Uh, when I first met Gene, because he was friends with all of them. And um, yeah, we just clicked. We just got on so well. And we're all very, very competitive. We're all competition anglers. Um, the slagging does be good. The crack does be 90. And we just all, yeah. we all fish together. And we we all learn new things off each other because every lad kind of brings something to the table, I suppose, you know. Yeah. I, I'll have to get in touch with Darren, actually, because he actually, I think, didn't he... He won the competition in Loch Melvin and he had a boat as well. He did, yeah. He won the catch and release competition up in Loch Melvin there recently. Um, yeah. I didn't I, I didn't actually get a ch- I couldn't go, unfortunately, um, which I was raging because myself, I'm a catch and release angler. I don't, uh, I, I kind of, re- I release everything, you know, um, like because I don't eat fish at all. Um, so what's the point? So I just do it solely for the sport of it. Um but it was a great competition and it was ran really well so and it was a success so yeah. uh, hopefully next year I'll get to fish it but uh, yeah he got a great prize out of it and, uh, and fair play to him yeah well you might have a chance to get in a boat now next month on uh, on Mask I think the World Cup it, it's it, it's a great competition and it brings some of the most amazing people to, to Loch Harab or to Loch Mask um, but it, you need you need a lot of luck in that competition too you know from boatman to where you go on the lake to qualifying to the final, you know, it's it's you really need a lot of luck on your side. But it, it's 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 a great competition, and then you get to see a lot of uh, anglers and friends and stuff like that and meet up. And, and by the end of the so week, I, you know, it's been hammered, haven't it? So the final, those fish has probably seen so many boats going over them. So yeah, you're gonna have to really it sorts out the men from the boys then. Absolutely, last year on the World Cup. My heat day, I, geez, I had the most amazing conditions. And I had something like 12 fish and only one measured. Oh. And I must, have, I must have turned, I'd say, another 30 fish on top of it, hitting it. And I was cha- and I was changing lines to see what they connect. And I was changing flies around to see what they connect. And I, I caught one or two in a row. And I said, geez, I might have it working now. And then the same thing had happened. And I just, it drove me demented. I couldn't figure it out. And even, even my uh, boatman, um, he was saying I've never seen anyone try so many fish he says uh, on mask he says it was absolutely crazy I, I I don't know what to say to you he said and I was like I know sure look at this happens to me all the time <laughs> <laughs> well it's a numbers okay. game do it plenty of times it's going to come good then at yeah, some point yeah. well I'm glad we got around to chat now we were going to chat in me but I guess really you know, it's a tough time to pin anyone down in me because anyone who got free time He's just going to be on the lake. But That's right, yeah. I'm glad we managed to, to sort something out tonight. There's one more question I want to ask. Where would you want to be to make your last cast? I really thought about this one. I'd have to say Carob, because once you start fishing out there, you'll fall in love with it. There's nowhere else you'd want to be. Many thanks, Niall. Kerry, thanks a million. If you've enjoyed this podcast and want to listen to more, please consider becoming a Patreon. We will get weekly podcasts and access to over 170 episodes, behind-the-scenes photography to go with each episode, plus other exclusive content and prizes. To become a Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash castingwithkerryjones, or you can find the link on my website, castingwithkerryjones.com. That's all for now. In tight lines, and may they always be up in the wave.